we are recording these seminars. Um, so if you don't want to be seen or you don't want to be heard during the recorded parts, I ask you to switch off your video and switch off your microphone. Uh, bear in mind, we will be saving the chat as well. So um, the only part of the seminar where there will be no recording and no saving of the chat will be the breakout rooms where you're completely free of our influence. So the, the research team and the panelists won't join you in the breakout rooms that you'll be completely free to discuss whatever you like. But when you come back to this room, we will be recording whatever you bring back for comment and discussion and question. So without further ado, I will hand over to uh, Mary. Is Mary is going to be our facilitator, and Julia is the backup and monitoring the chat. Yes. Okay. Great stuff. Thanks very much, Rory. Um, so it's a uh, good afternoon here to everybody. My name is Mary O'Shaughnessy, um, and I'm based at University College Cork, and it's a fantastic opportunity to work with um, colleagues, including Rory. Um, on this new cooperative um, seminar series. Um, and we're because we have to proceed through it quite quickly, I'm not going to spend too much time um, explaining the seminar series, but rather to introduce our three um, panelists for this first um, seminar series uh, today. So we have two people in person, albeit virtually, and then we have a third person who has uh, some recorded content, um, which uh, Rory will be um, addressing. And as you know, the theme of this particular um, first seminar in the series um, is dealing with the topic of uh, cooperativism, new cooperativism and sustainable development. Our three panelists um, are uh, Professor Martello Vieta, um, uh, Dr. Sarah Cabusa, and also Dr. Michaela Bianchi. Um, in, in, in the first instance, uh, Marcelo, who's an associate professor in workplace learning and the social and solidarity economy and based at the University of Toronto um, and has for the last five years been writing very extensively on this topic of, of new cooperativism. Um, and he will, through a video um, contribution, uh, share his views in relation to this theme and how it applies to sustainable development. And that will be followed by our other two panelists, um, Sarah Cabusa, who is a uh, holds a degree from the um, uh, University of Padua and also has a master's degree in communication and scientific journalism and is currently the president um, for Inextra Cooperative but also responsible for um, uh, their scientific communications. And then our third panelist uh, is Dr. Uh, Michaela Bianca, who is a postdoc researcher at the University of Parma. He's currently involved in research in relation to Italian community cooperatives um, and particular how they feature as part of the dynamic of uh, broader sustainable community development. So I'm absolutely delighted to um, uh, invite our panelists to make their contribution and I'll hand over to Rory who's going to run the first uh, video contribution from our colleague uh, Professor Marcelo Vieta. Okay so bear with me when I open up. Okay so this is Marcelo. Hello my name is Marcelo Vieta. I'm Associate Professor in Workplace Learning and Social Change and the Social and Solidarity Economy at the University of Toronto. As the editor of the special issue of Affinities in 2010 on the theme of a new cooperativism, and as someone who has been thinking and researching the concept for more than 15 years, I have been asked to give a brief definition of the term. The new cooperativism framework is an expression of commons thinking. It always has been, although I did not deploy commons language when I first started thinking about and researching uh, the term more than 15 years ago. In more recent writings, I have been explicitly making the commons new co-ops connection as have others, such as uh, Rory Ridley Duff. The new cooperativism describes a way of organizing cooperation that takes co-ops back to their original radical roots, but that also connects them to their responses and proposals by contemporary working people, communities, and social movements against and beyond crises especially the crises of neoliberal capitalism, our contemporary status quo economic paradigm. Part of the social and solidarity economy, the new cooperativism goes beyond the traditional aims of the co-op movement 
for member benefit and well-being, although it also encompasses that, to also now imagine new forms of solidary economic practices grounded in values of social justice and practices of collective action aimed at broadening social, economic, and increasingly environmental care and overall human and non and more than human well-being. We have witnessed two conceptual waves of the new cooperativism over the past 50 years. A first wave of new cooperativism thinking emerged between the 1970s and the early 2000s, including notions of solidarity between producers and consumers and egalitarian organizing principles between labor and community initiatives. Think of Italy's resident initiated social cooperatives, uh, the multi-stakeholder co-op turn and the rise of grassroots movements in Latin America uh, using cooperative forms of organizing, such as uh, the, Zap the Zapatistas or Brazil's uh, peasant-driven uh, Movimento Sem Terra, uh, or also Argentina's worker-recuperated enterprises, which I document in my recent book, Worker Self-Management in Argentina. A second wave of new cooperativism emerged around 2010, witnessed in global networks of digital resource sharing, distributed knowledge creation, open source copyleft intellectual licensing and co-produced commons regeneration. Think of Europe's smart co-op, Wikipedia, uh, the PDP Foundation, the Fair Shares Association, discos or distributed cooperatives, uh, distributed cooperativism and platform co-ops of all kinds. Explicitly commons based, it encompasses the second wave does the regeneration, and it does so explicitly, the regeneration, repurposing, and reinvention of socioeconomic life. Think also of community cooperatives, such as the UK's co-op pubs, uh, or Italy's urban and rural cooperative regeneration initiatives. I want to highlight six key features of a new cooperativism, expressed in either geographic territorial terms, across territories, as part of technologically distributed platforms or a combination of these. The new cooperativism espouses values and practices of subsidiarity, community-led economic democracy, and equitable distributions of resources and wealth. It is entrenched deeply within communities and usually embraces clear objectives for local community sustenance by and for the very people affected. Number two, it directly responds to crises and social needs. It tends to emerge as bottom-up solutions by working people and grassroots groups to myriad challenges, especially those generated by the neoliberal capitalist model, such as rising precarity and unemployment, local economic depletion, growing marginalization, and environmental degradation. Number three, it is ethical and sustainable. It is ethical, its ethical political commitments emerge not from capital-centric frameworks, but from everyday experiences and needs. Further, it is driven by more ethical and sustainable engagements with the planet, including human others and the non or more than human. Number four, it is rooted in equity, inclusion, and social justice. Its protagonists emerge from, engage with, and embrace broad coalitions of community members, multiple stakeholders, and social justice movements. Its organizational form is horizontal, democratic, and co-managed compared to both capitalist production and perhaps even to more traditional cooperative experiences. It fosters more gender sensitive divisions of labor and more directly democratic co-managed decision-making by all stakeholders. Number six, it practices collective stewardship, stewardship rather than private ownership. Indeed, notions of ownership are surpassed and collective stewardship privileged. Overall, the new cooperativism is ensconced in common thinking or a common sensibility key for any socioeconomic transformation. The commons thinking moves beyond just member benefit or profit motives and breaks with the capitalocentric framework. And the capitalocentric framework also of older co-ops uh, that might leave them open to co-optation by the hegemonic capitalist system. 
They need cooperativism is ultimately about the economic activities of production, distribution, exchange, and consumption as a commons, a commoning, and a commonwealth. Thanks, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the new cooperativism webinar series. Right, so we're um, we're not going to have any questions from Mar Marcelo at this point in time. Um, and so we'll, we'll reserve the discussion around uh, some of the points that were raised um, with Marcelo when you're in your in your own um, breakout rooms. And rather, I'll pass over to our second speaker, um, who is uh, Michaela Bianchi. Um, and uh, as I indicated from the University of Parma, um, and uh, who will talk more focused uh, in relation to the Italian community cooperatives and their relationship with more sustainable uh, community development. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for having me here today. And uh, as Mary has said, I'm Michele Bianchi. I'm a postdoc researcher at the University of Parma. Uh, during my PhD, I uh, carried out this research on Italian community cooperatives, uh, and also I published many works about this topic, and uh, then also I spent the first year and a half of my postdoc at the UNO Center in uh, Glasgow, at the Glasgow Caledonian University, working with Simon Tisday and Michael Roy on uh, hybrid organization uh, on research. And uh, so, the reason I've been asked to speak today is because I have um, certain knowledge about how this new cooperativism is uh, evolving in the Italian context. Uh, first of all, we have to keep in mind that Italy has a very uh, long tradition of cooperativism. The Italian cooperative movement uh, uh, is uh, 170 years old, and uh, we have had many uh, many phases in this uh, evolution and of course we have clear signs of new cooperativism uh, in, uh, in, in this evolution as Marcelo has said uh, as Marcelo has said uh, social cooperatives Italian social cooperatives uh, have represent a, a very important step in the evolution towards the new uh, the new cooperativism. Uh, but talking more about uh, the new experiences in uh, in these days, I I would talk about uh, first the reason why uh, many cooperatives uh, can be now today uh, be considered as new cooperative uh, new cooperative organizations. Uh, in my opinion, uh, most of them uh, are strongly influenced by new social movements. Uh, that uh, ask for more uh, social equality and for uh, a sustainable development. So many people uh, translate these values, uh, these uh, social and political demands into the cooperative movements and they want to see a concrete change in their uh, socioeconomic context. Therefore, they organize themselves into cooperatives or uh, uh, they influence local cooperatives to be more sustainable and uh, more uh, and to be more uh, focused on uh, sustainable development. Uh, just to be clear, I think that when we talk about sustainable development, uh, the SDGs are a very good framework to, uh, to comprehend uh, uh, to comprehend this, uh, this phenomenon. So uh, I think that cooperatives can be the, the right solution because uh, uh, it's a hybrid model uh, that can combine a business with social values. And this is why many people have chosen to use this model uh, to implement the sustainable development. Just to give a very quick example, it's very uh, uh, fresh news a couple of days ago uh, in Florence, uh, sorry, Mi Michele, you should a little bit hurry up. We have very little time left. Okay, just to finish this, a uh, few workers in Florence have created uh, the second cooperative for uh, food delivery 
challenging uh, the idea of uh, algorithm behind work uh, and uh, created a more sustainable uh, uh, model for uh, food delivery. Um, so this is this is our my point about why cooperatives uh, can uh, lead the sustainable development. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michaela. Um, and we'll come back to maybe some of those themes um, in a couple of moments after we've heard from uh, Sarah. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. If you don't mind, I would share just two, a couple of uh, slides. Okay. So I'm Sara Capuzzo, I'm president of uh, Enostra, which is a cooperative. Enostra is a national cooperative um, based on uh, active participation and the, uh, in the direct involvement of energy citizen. Energy citizen are either enterprises or, or uh, citizen that um, take a part, take, uh, has a role in the transition. So they become producer on, the, on, um, on their houses or enterprises with um, photovoltaic panels, for example, or they become members of cooperatives, production cooperatives. We work on uh, production and sales of uh, renewable uh, ethical and sustainable energy. We realized um, renewable plants, collective plants, so um, realized with the um, uh, participation of members as, as, with the crowdfunding campaigns. We provide services and solutions for the energy savings for our members. Uh, we work on the information and campaigns and, uh, and uh, education projects. For with the aim of uh, raising awareness and helping reduction of consumption, and uh, to tackle with uh, uh, tackle fuel poverty as well. And uh, uh, since the, the last couple of years, we are working on the activation of renewable energy communities and collective self consumption schemes. Uh, just one slide to say to to raise the attention on some aspects of. Uh, um, the role of cooperatives in energy transition. Uh, I believe that it's uh, crucial and uh, very promising because, um, first of all, cooperatives, if we, if we compare cooperatives with traditional enterprises, we have a uh, uh, difference on the value propos proposal, which is more um, reliable, which is perceived, and it is uh, actually more reliable and transparent and trans trustworthy for members. Because um, when you deal with the cooperative, you are a member, you are not just a buyer. So um, the cooperative ha has to, um, to look after your interests and to uh, guarantee a level of, uh, of services. Oh, so yes. it's, uh, uh, it push you yes, to, to be um, more, um, um, efficient and more effective in your purpose. And uh, cooperative is expression um, for just in the democratic transition. It has a bottom-up approach and has all the characteristic, characteristics of cooperative and the energy citizen, which participate are the main players and uh, um, has, as has been said before, we, uh, the, um, we work we, I, I mean, as a movement, we work a lot on the sustainable devel development goals, more, more goals, because we work on affordable and, and clean energy and uh, sustainable cities and communities and responsible consumption production and the climate mitigation. So we can work and um, re uh, reach um, important goals. And uh, the, this new opportunity of the energy communities based on the territories, um, help to strengthen bonds with the territories and gives an answer to the um, context uh, and site uh, needs. So it's uh, uh, tailor-made and it should help to, to reach uh, local goals and to answer to the need, specific needs. Uh, it's um, a tool, a, media, a, a medium to help in tackling fuel poverty mainly via energy communities. So these um, new bodies that can, that works locally 
and can help fuel poverty. Uh, uh, sorry, Sarah, you should a little bit. Okay, <laughs> a few words. And it helps to fight uh, against the population of rural areas and small villages and create op job opportunities. And um, we, uh, you can use energy as a pretext to engage citizens on commons and to revitalize uh, um, the territories and local communities as well. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank, thank you very much. That's okay. Um, so maybe what, what we'll do is we'll um, address some of the questions and we'll ask Michaela to maybe put on his um, screen again, if it's, yeah. Um, and uh, just in relation perhaps maybe to, to Michaela, just uh, arising out of, of the discussion that you presented and particularly looking at um, the whole idea of, of the role of community cooperatives and sustainable community development. Um, uh, what factors do you think can favor the rethinking of cooperatives as sustainable organizations? Because obviously there, you know, there are some emerging perspectives on the role of cooperatives or their traditional cooperatives and particularly these um, newer, perhaps often multi-stakeholder community cooperatives. Um, I, I would like you to perhaps maybe address that particular question as to how you think um, uh, the, the kind of factors that could contribute to us beginning to rethink about the role of cooperatives as, as sustainable, as organizations that can contribute to this type of um, sustainable development at a community level. Yes, thank you very much for this question. Um, I think, uh, members of the cooperatives are uh, the main factor that can influence the uh, transition toward a more sustainable uh, development uh, into uh, the new cooperativism because uh, these are the subjects that own, manage and influence the cooperatives, in particular into the new cooperativism, new cooperativism movement because we are talking about small sites cooperatives uh, very focused on uh, um, social issues and uh, uh, environmental issues but these because are the people that are uh, the member of these cooperatives uh, brings into these organization these uh, instances and uh, influence and inputs from other social movements as i say and because they want to see uh, a, a real change in uh, in the world, so they ask uh, their cooperatives to be that change. So, just to sum up, a bit, the membership of the cooperative cooperatives are uh, the main factor that are influencing old cooperatives or that uh, give that uh, imprinting to the new cooperatives. Okay, Michaela, thank you very much. Um, and our, our, our colleagues that are on the line will have an opportunity to discuss some of those observations in, in the breakout rooms when we have um, the breakout rooms for discussion. A second question perhaps that I would like maybe Sarah to uh, respond to um, is really maybe just to elaborate a little bit more in relation to the idea of ethical and sustainable energy um, and uh, in terms of how you feel that, um, you know, ordinary people, can become more motivated about this notion of ethical and sustainable energy and, and hence um, give rise to uh, the type of cooperative that you've been talking about as kind of part of the solution to that. Uh, thank you for the question. Yes, um, um, for, from our point of view, uh, not all the renewable energy is sustainable. Yes, uh, and we for us it's it, it's very important. We have uh, done um, a sort of matrix where we assess the sustainability of the plants. For example, we we don't like um, big plants made on rural areas. For I'm talking about photovoltaic plants because they, they uh, subtract uh, the field for the agricultural activities. So we we wouldn't choose and we wouldn't buy those that energy. Or for example, if you think about um, wind plants, we would not realize on, uh, we would not buy energy from plants that are um, installed against the, um, um, the volunteer of the of people, the community. Yes. So it's important to give the um, 
an accent, to put an accent and to stress this aspect, cultural and uh, important aspects for us, for to, to this energy. So you can choose, you can produce and choose renewable energy, but you could do more than that. Um, so you could narrow the, 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 the choice to those, to those plants. Kind of and we talk about ethical energy because we, uh, with this our metrics of ours, we assess even the profile of the producer, and we assess if, for example, they have any connection uh, with mafia, or we assess if they have uh, they respect the rights of the workers. You can put a lot of aspects. The energy is the same, the one that you use when you light on the you switch on the light, but the meaning and the movement that you can push forward is different. Yeah, that's actually that's really interesting. The the um, the notion of having a matrix to determine the sources of the energy that you 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 purchase or you consume. Right. I'm conscious of the time because we've already run a little few minutes over. So what I'm going to invite is for Rory to create the breakout rooms um, and for for um, all of all of those all of us online to have the next 25 minutes um, as per a discussion whereby um, you may uh, discuss really the statements that have been made and the observations and the key points that have been raised by the three speakers and then we, we come back in after 25 minutes and have a discussion and feedback around that is that okay with everybody it is so um, um, I'll be creating I'll be random creating groups um, of five but some of them will end up having only four people in it because the the panelists and the facilitators are going to stay in this room and form their own breakout group so we can have our own opening the room station yeah i but i thought it's a very it was a very good introduction yeah yeah yeah, to the, yes. yeah what the whole it. purpose yes, so today. if you weren't as familiar with the literature on on new cooperativism you got a very quick um oversight of it so um i i think that that was good in the sense that it just gave an overarching yeah. context. Michaeli's worked a lot with Marcelo, have you not? Um, did he give yeah. a fair, did he give a fair rendition of his of his thoughts and work? Sorry, can you repeat? Did he give a fair rendition of his thoughts and work? I, I think yes. I mean, uh, this is why I asked it to watch the video because. Uh, I mean, I even if I know what he was going to say, I thought, well, it's really good for me if I check what uh, his content, so I'm not going to repeat again same things. And uh, honestly, I'm having now second thoughts that probably I could um, focus more my intervention speaking on about concrete example because he provided the theory. I could maybe say more about example. For example, at this news uh, mm -hmm. a few days ago in Florence, uh, workers uh, created the second cooperatives of food delivery. All former mm -hmm. uh, Foodora, Uber Eats, uh, and uh, Deliveroo uh, employees joined together and uh, and found this cooperative. The first one, of course, is in Bologna, and not not surprising about this. And uh, and uh, this is a, a topic because they are challenging uh, the the idea behind this uh, uh, platform of of the algorithm that governs the the, the work uh, redistribution and uh, I think it's really interesting. The only thing is, uh, of course, the, the the price gap because in Bologna. For example, for one delivery, one delivery costs eight euro. Yeah, I'm sorry, I've, we've got um, Marco. I think because you joined after I created the mm. rooms, maybe you'll have to stay with so us. Who are you, Marco? <laughs> who are you? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm a researcher at the Montfort currently, at the Montfort University. Uh, but I'm moving to Northumbria and I'm interested more in um, mm. healthcare cooperatives. Oh, in what uh, healthcare? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So is that what attracted you to this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So are you involved in any healthcare cooperatives, or are you just researching them? No, I'm just researching them. Like uh, I couldn't find any in the UK, so I'm based in the UK, and obviously, yeah, uh, I couldn't find any. So, oh, there was a catch to first university. Sorry, 
Yeah. You're moving to North Cumbria, but you're now where? Uh, the Montfort. As in Montfort. Leicester. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm just thinking, um, the public sector mutuals, I mean, we've had I, I, so quite some of the CIC spin-outs. Um, mm. do have I do have worker worker members who have one person one vote and in, in some cases they have a majority would you consider those healthcare co-ops uh, 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 we are in the progress like of trying to find some criteria to differentiate between like uh, cooperatives like that are more community center uh, yeah. we, for instance like we have the example of new worthley in leeds uh, or bromley Bobo in, uh, in london there's one uh, called lacala um, oh, sorry lacala uh, one's called Lakala, which is we used to have a, a, a student. Let me put it in the chat. Whoops. Thank chat? you. But Marco, are you Italian or? Yeah. Originally, yes. I'm based in Eurixe in Trento, and we are actually coordinating yeah. a research project on um, on social enterprises and healthcare. Oh, so right. maybe it could be interesting to to get in touch to share some information. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you we are not in the perfect room there, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> we are not. Easy, like, uh, I was glad to be here. <laughs> we are not focusing specifically on health cooperatives, but more in general on community-based uh, social enterprises that may, of course, uh, use the cooperative framework or maybe associations on our others, and they actually provide different types of. Uh, health and social we, services. We, I have a student who's just finished her PhD on looking at a, a very successful community-based healthcare co-op. Maybe, maybe you can uh, her get in touch with us too. Yeah, yes, absolutely. absolutely. In, in terms of the topic, do you think do you think healthcare co-ops is new cooperativism? Because I'm, I'm just thinking back to the old friendly societies. They I I, I, I think it at least in Italy it depends very much because there are some cooperatives which would be defined as health cooperatives. We are not really behaving properly. So what they do is to provide, um, let's say, uh, less expensive workforce. So like, for instance, paramedics, and so <laughs> they are not really contributing to improving the welfare whatsoever. What they do is just they enable private hospitals, for instance, to, uh, to save money. So, yeah. But what the ones in Italy that in, involve both patients and, and professionals... I would thought they they sit within the framework of new cooperativism. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, sure, sure. There are some. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just trying to say that there is not just one unique trend. There. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, Marco, what do you think, but I believe there are very diverse trends. Yeah. I actually wrote an article last year, published an article based on some interviews I conducted during the COVID crisis, exactly on this issue. And just to try to understand what could be the contribution of the wider third sector, because in Italy we refer to the third sector as a framework in building a community-based based health system. And, uh, and of course, if we want really to contribute to that, I believe we should question the role of those cooperatives that do not really contribute to it, but they are just using the framework because it is more convenient. I mean, this is very controversial, but this is my position. <laughs> that, in my opinion, will be also the future for uh, a rural area, rural and mountain areas, yeah. because yeah. many people don't want to move there. Maybe now they want with uh, smart working and COVID, uh, but then they think about, okay, we don't have services such as transportation, a good internet connection, and health services. These mm -hmm. cooperatives, can really play a role because now these community cooperatives are just in tourism, agriculture, accommodation, restoration, classic things. But they maybe one day can also implement local health services and uh, in, in those areas where the public authorities don't have the funds to implement these services, even if we have to see what, what will be the recovery fund strategy. I trust everybody, everyone's back in at this stage. 
Okay. Um, so really, this, this is an opportunity for um, uh, having had, had, a, had your own discussions within the breakout groups and, and primarily in response to perhaps some of the ideas that were expressed during the opening statements. Um, we, we, it has, it, everybody has been encouraged to come up with some questions, but also you might have some observations that you'd like to share. So um, perhaps if we went around the room, um, for want of another way to describe it, that perhaps maybe we might have someone with an opening question from uh, one, of the, one of the groups, um, and we will work through those discussions and have um, your views uh, for the next 25 minutes or thereabouts, and then we'll uh, draw a conclusion with some reflection from the panelists in relation to their, their overall concluding remarks. So can I invite people? Um, yes, please, Rafael. Yeah, so just from our group, um, what we discussed was um, first this point about if we talk about transition and sustainable development, the old issue between big and small cooperatives, um, how this actually plays into that um, challenge of transformation, especially also if you have a comparative um, context where we talk, you know, energy is very different in some countries, you have a lot of renewable energy already hydropower in others you don't. So it's there's a lot of issues in the background of what will actually be selected in, in energy um, transitions. So that was one point that we discussed. Another point that we discussed was um, about, it was very interesting to make this link to the comments um, in Marcelo's video. Um, and it was presented as beyond ownership, but we would have liked to hear more what it actually meant. Because at least if you think about the Ostrom transmission, it's not beyond ownership, it's just a common pool resource thinking, right? So we were just curious what is actually supposed to mean. Um, so that would have been a, a, a question we had. And then I think the last point was about the uh, principle seven and how to what extent this discussion of the SDG changes or displaces maybe the interest in community involvement. If I'm summarizing this properly, mm -hmm. you have to, <clears throat> my colleagues have to add to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Raphael, thank you very much. Um, is there anybody else within that group that perhaps maybe would like to add to that or um, raise an additional question? Question in the chat. Question in the chat. Arising from breakout room, I don't know which one, have the millions of Consumer Cup members in the UK been abandoned by new cooperativism? Okay. I'm not. I mean, we haven't got a panelist who's from the UK, so um, I would do your best with it. I, I could hazard a had as a comment if if we want at the end. Okay, so maybe we keep a record of those questions um, as well. Um, I could, Mary. I could briefly comment on that because Grant be was fantastic, in, Martin. Yes, <laughs> Grant was in our. We had a group of three, and Grant doesn't have a mic, so he couldn't comment. So we only engaged by our chat. And really, I guess the discussion was about uh, the extent to which the old uh, cooperatives are rising from the 19th century, but through a whole process of mergers, you know, have mostly a concentration in the, in the cooperative group in particular, which has effectively abandoned uh, member-based uh, democracy uh, and also other consumer societies, the connection between them and new cooperativism. Um, uh, and as I said to Grant in the chat that we were having, in my mind, the cooperative group as it exists, although not all of its members have, uh, have been lost to kind of like dynamic and radical views of cooperation. And I really, and one of the issues which perhaps we could discuss more clearly here is, you know, about the involvement of young people. Uh, which hasn't specifically been mentioned, but which, to my mind, is driving a lot of the interest in new cooperativism uh, on the ground in terms of people wanting to create uh, cooperatives out of social movements and so on. Lovely, Martin. Thank you. I see um, Roger and then I think Sonia um, after Roger. Hi, Roger. Hi, Mary. Hi, nice everybody. You. I'm Julia. Hi, Mary. Um, yeah, Matt uh, and uh, other members of our subgroup Sort of addressed a uh, an issue similar to what uh, which I think Grant was leading, alluding to, is, which is you know the, the extent to which um, new cooperativism is different from old cooperativism, and um, to me it, it seems like uh, maybe there's at least two dimensions. One is that there are innovations in you know this way in which 
cooperation is structured or something like that, uh, multi-stakeholder structures being you know, one, one example. And the other is uh, the extent to which they are um, closer to um, social movement values of one kind or another, um, where you know, the old cooperatives have now lost some of that inspiration in, in many, many regards. And it also seems to me that it's a, it's a kind of a, a set of family resemblances uh, amongst new corporatism. In other words, there's, there's not a kind of a set of new principles which they all subscribe to. Um, you know, there's some of them that are, you know, close to the environmental and sustainability movement and, and very local. There are others that are, um, you know, much more about trade union and employee uh, movements. And so it's not like there's one set of principles. It's like a family of different principles which mark them out as being, in some, some regards, different from old corporatism. Thank you very much, Roger. Um, and I think Sonia had her hand up as well. Uh, yeah, I want to just uh, say the, the, how I interpreted our group's uh, chat. And we pretty much, uh, you know, uh, picked the brain of Sarah there. Thankfully, she ventured into our room. <laughs> so it was about, it's really the question of mainstreaming and how that is a challenge. Uh, you want it, but you don't want it kind of thing, right? Um, so uh, it, the purpose being sustainability, you want to mainstream and you want as many people on board. But then you are shifting away from the original uh, energy of the original members. And Michele, in his opening, actually, uh, you know, I think nailed it by saying, what is the key factor? It's the members. It's who are the people around the table and what it is they want. Uh, and so it's really interesting that you have the initial members who want sustainability, want transition to energy in this case, but there are other social justice issues and environmental issues we we're talking about, right? And so then what do you do when the rest of them join in who are there just for savings? Um, nothing wrong with that, but that's not exactly what... So it's really the old story to me. Uh, and it's, it's a new challenge uh, in, in these new spaces probably now. Thank you, Sonia. Um, okay, so any other observations or questions? Um, is there another group here that ha haven't had an opportunity to um, present on behalf of their group? Uh, sorry. Um, yes, please. Thank you, Catalina. Yeah, I mean, well, we were um, two people in our group, uh, Mike, uh, Adrian Bailey and myself. Well, um, so two things that I wanted to know, I mean, um, well, just to share with you some of the conversation, the insights we have. Number one, everything that is new you know, uh, I, I have to say that, you know, we were very uh, um, uh, skeptical about, about those. Um, uh, and uh, so even with SDGs, and then in terms of how the new cooperativism movement or the new cooperative is, is being presented, uh, in a way we have, uh, like, we take for granted, oh, those are the, you know, good objectives of it or good uh, uh, values and mission. Um, uh, but uh, if we scratch a little bit, you know, I mean, when when um, could we be addressing um, the old problems that old cooperativism, new cooperativism, and any new in terms, uh, you know, uh, has to tackle? If we talk about, you know, uh, corrupted practices and unethical practices within uh, 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 this this same movement. So uh, I think that that's something very important to uh, to consider. Um, so that that's one. For example, in terms of SDGs, um, you know, we just uh, we were just reminding where SDGs come from. So it was not something that um, uh, um, um, NGOs and a group of, of people from you know under the umbrella of United Nations. I mean. Um, once again, if we scratch also the SDGs, we come up with a World Business Council uh, for Sustainable Development, who were the ones who have really put their agenda into these SDGs. And we can just see goals, targets, and, and indicators are mostly, you know, um, let's see, um, run from the perspective of cost and benefit. Um, uh, and then, um, uh, then 
in terms of new cooperativism and the use of technology as, as a, an important, once again, it's a big question mark about the, the uh, technology determinism that we are accepting like, you know, okay, here it is. So how it is, it, it is embedded or how it changed our uh, way of, of thinking or, or, or doing. And, uh, and the last thing is, you know, there were three words that were, um, that we also um, uh, interchange was, what's important is scaling up. Is that the only scaling up, scaling dimension we are talking about? Or what about scaling out? And then the one is scaling deeper, uh, you know, to what, you know, and those are the things that should really, in a way, um, uh, be addressed. Uh, what is, uh, what are the obstacles? for not doing that, you know, for those things. So, so I'm sure that maybe Adrian has more to add. Please, Adrian, <laughs> go ahead. Catalina. Thank you. That was a good summary, Catalina. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think this, the scaling issue, I think, links to what Sonia was saying about mainstreaming. Some of the um, contradictions in that when, when you attempt to scale uh, cooperative movement. I'll probably leave it at that. Let others. Thank you, join. Adrian. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, any other comments from any other groups? Or any other observations that you want to add in relation to the, the statements and even what has been um, raised here? You could, you could pick up what's been in chat. So there's been. I just, I'm not able to see the chat function for some reason, so maybe... Oh, that's strange. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, uh, Grant, does anybody want to hazard a response to Grant's question about have the millions of consumer co-op members in the UK been abandoned by new cooperativism? Uh, I've responded in chat, but I wondered if anybody else wanted to respond to, to Grant. I, well, I, I wanted to ask for a clarification because I thought that was a very interesting... Um, the way that was phrased was very interesting. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but the idea that <clears throat> those members have been abandoned by the new cooperativism rather than a new cooperativism having developed because of older cult movements, abject failure, um, and and whether you whether or not you hold the members of those co-ops responsible for that is is a kind of another sub question, really, I suppose, but. It's, I, I certainly wouldn't see it as an abandonment of those those members. Um, and yeah, so I'd, I'd like to know, I'd like to hear more from Grant whether that, that, that was a, just a kind of a, a turn of phrase or whether that's a, that's a genuine feeling that people have. And if so, I think that's a really interesting prospect to kind of consider that that there are potentially members of an older cooperativism who feel um, abandoned and and if so why and what you know what, what that kind of relationship is um i mean I, 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 there aren't many people there aren't that many people here from the uk i know maureen is um adrian is um uh, i i don't think i think it's um it's just a new development within the co-op movement i don't think anybody is proactively abandoning the consumer co-ops it's just that they're more interested in worker and solidarity co-ops. Uh, I think the heritage of cooperatism comes from the worker co-op side, which has, has mutated, I think, into a, a genuine interest in solidarity co-ops. Um, and the consumer co-ops could engage with new cooperativism if they were open to worker membership in the way that some of the Canadian retail co-ops have opened themselves up to worker membership. And it might be interesting to hear from those of you who are in Canada as to how well that transition has going. I remember a, a sizable consumer co-op um, admitting worker members on an equal basis. Um, um, I, the, the grant saying it's, it's said that the co-op group is not a co-op anymore. I don't think that's a position taken by anybody in this research community. We're just, we're not that actively researching consumer co-ops, it seems. I'd say that. Yeah. I don't think it's a co-op in any meaningful sense of the word. Yeah, but I, I don't think it's a position of this group to say that, is it? Is it? There's a critique that they've uh, been watered down. 
Um, I, I don't want to dominate the conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe some of us are not familiar enough with the UK situation. Okay. So personally, I don't really know. Um, I cannot really express my opinion on the COP group because I'm not aware of its recent development. So. Mm -hmm. But I think perhaps maybe what, what, what a sub-theme is emerging from, from what I'm listening to is that it's about the relevancy of perhaps maybe um, some of the existing cooperatives um, in light of the new social movement driven um new cooperativism so so maybe that's part of part of the issue in terms of uh, the perception about the relevancy of what's there already and and why there is this um sense of perhaps maybe creating a new type of cooperativism anyone like to martin would you like to make a comment in relation to that I mean, I, I agree it's not the position of, of this community to take a position on, on the co-op group, but it was I who said in the discussion with Grant uh, that it's, I don't regard it as a co-op anymore in the sense that the majority of its directors are not elected by the members and even those who are, are screened by the board before they're allowed to stand. And uh, those who've been excluded in the past included Pauline Green, whose experience leading the ICA wasn't regarded as sufficient. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, my position is that those who are interested in creating a new cooperative movement are largely wasting their time trying to reform an organization which is now structurally uh, incapable. Uh, you, if Grant wants to get involved, he can stand for the National Members Council of the Cooperative Group and much good may that do him. But I think there are a lot of people around who are interested, uh, and a lot of actually, the, well, first of all, I'd say, I think the majority of members of the consumer co-ops in the UK probably don't even recognize themselves as members and don't recognize any connection there and don't actually participate, even in the minimal extent they can in terms of, of cast, casting a vote when it comes around to the, the AGM. Uh, and the other example I would just give to, to support Rory is not just Canada, but obviously, the Eroski, as part of the Mondragon Co-ops, uh, has a 50-50 split between workers and consumers. And Mondragon has always consciously sought to uh, include other stakeholders, uh, for instance, the education co-op between uh, staff, between students and between the wider community. And to me, Mondragon is a great example, actually, of new cooperativism, that, that has even if it wasn't called that at the time, that has distinguished itself from old ways of tackling these issues. Thank you, Martin. Um, I, I saw Sarah's hand going up and, and then Michaela. So maybe, Sarah, would you like to make a comment or an observation or, or a response, perhaps, to some of the, the uh, questions? Thank you. Um, uh, I'm not an expert on, I'm not a researcher uh, uh, and not an expert on old and new cooperatism. So I can give my, my opinion that it's not it's just my opinion for my experience. I, I believe that in, for, for what concerns energy, uh, this movement of the energy communities that is going to raise and to, be, to become a, um, uh, one of the um, the main uh, opportunities to reach the goals of a reno renewable transition. And I think that these small um, communities that are locally based, which where the proximity aspect is, um, is important, I think they will um, go back to the root, as, as it has been said, and to uh, understand how they can um, um, produce social impacts and, as I said in my presentation, uh, how they can uh, answer to the local needs. So I believe that the story, the old story of cooperatism will be very helpful to this new form of cooperatism about energy. I'm talking about just the movement uh, from the Renewable Directive and for the uh, renewable energy communities. Uh, I think that they will learn a lot from old from the grandfather of cooperatism to be effective and to be um, to to um, in, enhance the impact of their activity and just one more thing about scaling up we are now 8000 members so we are going to we are we are working on the on the topic of respecting and being faithful to our to the beginning 
and to be able to uh, to to be faithful and to increase the impacts and to uh, answer to a growing number of members and we are doing a, a um, like a few, few events with experts on this topic that are helping us on this on this goal and uh, we have um, settled uh, local groups of members uh, where they, there are some mem more members and they are collecting other um, other people join the the cooperatives and they uh, talk about how to promote the cooperative how to reach other people and which other um, projects can be done locally to to be more effective in uh, in the transition and we are in in contact in strict contact with these groups local groups so they still uh, reach me by WhatsApp, or they can talk with the with the um, with the governance of the com of the community. So we are still faithful, I believe. Maybe not in a few years' time, then, uh, where when I hope we, there will be lots of thousands of people. But now we are still the same thing, I believe, that we were, and uh, we we listen a lot to members to be able to answer to their expectation. Thank you, Sarah. And um, just in relation to that, and maybe in response to Catalina's question, I mean, what's what's your sense of scaling deeper, Catalina? Um, and how does it relate perhaps maybe to Sarah's response there? I think there are two words, uh, key words that Sarah has said, uh, at least that resonates with, with us is in terms of this proximity and this intercooperativism. So how, you know, it's not only multi-stakeholders, but how we work together, how we uh, strength uh, and we change these power structures into what, what we call trust. Power is, is the trust of new cooperativism. So uh, because how we hold everybody together, I think, uh, uh, what are the bases? We can have very nice values of, out there in the wall, you know, wherever, but it is our commitment how we exercise those values on a daily basis. And I think one key factor is how we not only promote trust, but we are trustworthy for others. And that's what Sarah also, I remember her uh, PowerPoint. So that, that's what I will say. Thank you, Catalina. Thank you, Sarah. And maybe on that, we could move to Michaela, who may have um, some observation because um, you know, there's a very strong sense about the role of these as kind of place-based development as well, which which speaks a little bit to uh, Michaela and his his observations around the whole role of community cooperatives and and their contribution to the sustainable development of the places that they they locate themselves in or that they are founded in. So, uh, Michaela. Yeah, thank you. Well, I think that we all agree that. Discussion is absolutely the conversation is absolutely interesting. We can go in on for hours. Personally, I would go. I really would like to go on for hours because I have so many things to say, and um, I would like to address all your comments and questions. But of course, uh, we can. So I go very quickly just to say a few things. The discussion about owners, stakeholders, it's really important. In few cases, we can say also is influenced by uh, national policy. For example, in Italy, cooperatives cannot give returns on investment. So for example, here we don't have this kind of discussion because the law uh, forbids uh, this return on investment. Some cooperatives have found other ways to do this, but if we talk about return of, on investment, there is not in Italy. Uh, first, second, about the small sites, I think is a reaction to uh, to how far big old cooperatives uh, have gone uh, uh, far away from uh, the, the the values and uh, and the original values of the cooperatives. Because even if I look at the uh, consumer cooperative movement in Italy, which I think shares uh, a lot of elements of uh, its story with uh, Cooperative UK. At the beginning, it was an organization created to fight back capitalism by Marxist, Marxist workers' movement to help people to have affordable goods and uh, have affordable, affordable food uh, for their own families. 
And but in the second half of the last centuries, it totally lost this value because after the Second World War, uh, cooperators thought, well, or we go for a massive industrialization and commercialization of our movement, or otherwise we are going to die. And then they end up nowadays to be formally a cooperative, but at the real meaning, they are no more a cooperative. They have demutualized their cooperatives, and now they just think about profit. And people that go there don't see themselves as members, but just as customers. And as a reaction, they prefer to be into small size cooperatives where they can see the value, their value concretized into cooperative actions and uh, to, and, and here I arrive at the community cooperatives where that, in my opinion, uh, have done a very uh, interesting step forward the new cooperatives because they don't limit their mutual benefit to members, but they see all the members of their communities as potential stakeholders and beneficiaries. So they see, uh, they see, they, they have extended this uh, mutuality. Uh, just a quick note, I paste my, the link to my research gate profile where you can find also a paper that I wrote about this historical evolution and why nowadays community cooperatives have extended the mutual benefit. But again, because members uh, didn't see a response from the state or from the private market, so they go for the third way, that is let's self-organize our forces. Even if sometimes they don't, um, they don't challenge the power because they just create services. Other times, yes, as I said before, the uh, food deliver delivers cooperatives. They want to challenge the power. They want to say we don't want to see an algorithm who governs our working life. So let's organize a cooperative. But in many other cases that I've seen, community cooperatives, they are new cooperatives, organization yes. Do they challenge the capitalism power? Not too much, honestly. But, and uh, so I leave the floor to others to share their thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Michaela. So um, any other reactions or um, observations or comments or, or another issue that people would like to raise? I see, yeah, I see Roger. I think, Sarah, you have an old hand up, do you? So maybe Roger. Yeah, um, I just wanted to make a couple of points. One is, um, I'd be interested to know from the organizers whether they see this this um, this project that we're engaged in of a series of seminars as being essentially revolutionary or reformist. Um, I think I'd go, I'd go for the revolutionary Angle and let the, the the kind of the the others reform themselves. Um, but secondly, I, I wanted to kind of return to the the issue of sustainability, which this this uh, particular seminar is uh, fo focused on. And it's we kind of we've approached it from different angles. One is the SDGs, and I I'm not kind of convinced that um, kind of tick boxing co-ops against SDGs is a great path. But the thing that does interest me is whether, whether some of the principles like Catalina just suggested, of proximity and intercooperation, do provide transitional dynamics um, to greater sustainability. Um, should I speak for the organizers? I think we're leaning towards you know peace, peaceful resolution peaceful re revolution if that if that if that if that's the I can't speak for the rest of the editorial group who are involved in this there's there's seven of us um, but I think we're we we want these this seminar series to really get a feel for what the attitude is on the ground um, and I think there are some very radical movements, particularly in South America, um, 
I don't see violent revolutionary tendencies in Europe, but I think we know from the recovered companies that there's been uh, some real um, community battles in Argentina. Um, I'm not sure that there have been the battles with, this, with the state, though. So um, it might be that there are people who can comment about the South American movement uh, from a position of knowledge that I, I don't have. Uh, hopefully that will come out as we go through the seminar series as well. Okay, um, and I think also maybe just in response, Roger, there, there, there's also I think perhaps even in 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 maybe more deeper reading of of um, some of Michaela's work is there, there is also a growing perception that perhaps maybe some of the existing cooperatives don't necessarily serve well, um, are 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 maybe are they the best exemplars for cooperative ways of working, which of course. Is, is some of that discussion about the emergence of, of social enterprises and, um, and that these are seen as kind of al an alternative business model. So I think that it's, it's also part of that ongoing debate as we see many jurisdictions moving towards developing policies around social enterprises and, and where maybe cooperatives aren't factored in um, quite, quite so well in part of that discourse. So it's really, it's about, having a discussion around where all that fits and and to the point about sustainability because obviously sustainability is such a broad terminology um i i think when you look at something like community cooperatives and and the area that i'm particularly interested in myself as a researcher and uh, the idea of sustainability is not just from an environmental point of view it's about the retention of populations it's about uh, some of the discussion about healthcare cooperatives, it's creating employment in rural areas for place-based development. It's um, acting as a way of retention of some services that would ordinarily be eked out of, of a regional. So it's actually looking at it from the idea of, of um, social as well as economic, as well as environmental and even political sustainability in terms of the kind of governance structures that are often created as a result of this, this type of um, organizational form that is now taking more, more of a, a priority engagement about the development of their localities and, and therefore becoming a little bit more politicized. So it's a, it's a broader view as to what constitutes actually sustainability. Um, I think- did you have Yeah, can I just say, um, we're, we're sort of 10 minutes away from finishing and we've, we've got another theme starting at to 2 30 so just wondering if we take Raphael and then allow the yeah. panelists a closing statement and then we can maybe get a, few, a little comfort break in before we start um, the theme to, theme two discussions yeah just very briefly uh, uh, so these SDGs clearly they are very abstract right and an international compromise with all kinds of all its defects but maybe one interesting link to the proximity is that I do feel that a lot of municipalities and regions are incorporating these into their ways of doing policies, right? And I think this is the link to proximity because there you have to show what you can actually do beyond these tick boxes, as Roger said. Um, and I think that's maybe the natural level um, where this debate is, is more interesting and also more concrete than just um, SDG 7 or I don't know what. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely, yes, yes. Okay, so will I invite um, maybe Sarah and M Michaela to make one maybe lasting comment um, before we draw the, the seminar to a conclusion? So Sarah, do you want to go first? Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. I Just one consideration about uh, the attention that is raised uh, on uh, on this um, democratic and uh, diffuse uh, no no it's not the right word diffuse sorry <laughs> and spread movement uh, I diffusion dif pardon diffusion you're talking about diffusion. is it the spread yeah. yes yes spread yes uh, I receive a lot of um, con uh, connection. Uh, via LinkedIn or via whatever social network from uh, the big players, the traditional players that want to know more about these movements and this social uh, attention that we pay on the subject. So I believe that if the big player 
uh, are interested in this topic, it means that we can we have the power to to make the difference. We I'm not talking about an Austria, I'm talking about the movement, obviously. So it, it means that we are in the right direction, and they the that this approach, the cooperative approach on the topic is something that um, is going further the 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 bar. Um, the border of the cooperatism, because the, the normal traditional player would like to learn how to reach people, how to be trustworthy, how to um, uh, collect um, consumers around uh, a new um, shape of markets like fix flexibility on energy and other topics. They, they are not able to reach the consumers and to raise their attention and to be trusted so mm -hmm. they, they are, are going to learn how to, to do that. In the other way, in the other way, we, we should learn how to reach so many people as they are able to do. So it would be interesting to share the experiences and to go in the same direction. They may be the, the, they are going to do it for business purposes, not for social purposes. We are do, mm -hmm. doing the, the same thing for other purposes, but the, the, the important thing is that uh, there is no time to to be waste and there is ur a urgent need of uh, uh, giving shape to this transition. Thank you, Sara. And Michaela? Well, first of all, Last word. let me say again that it's really hard to sum up uh, all the thoughts and consideration that right now I have in my mind. I just would like to share also in the chat my email address uh, for who's interested to reach me. Uh, I'm gonna say a couple of things that also the results of my year and a half of uh, research in, at the Glasgow Caledonian University with Michael Roy and Simon Teasdale. I am sure that also new cooperativism is going to face uh, challenges, tensions and trade off in the future because it's, it's a movement of hybrid organization and at a certain point, there will be problems to face, uh, to, to combine the economic growth of the business with the maintenance of the social values embedded into this organization. And this is a common thing of hybrid organization, because as I said before, for the uh, Italian movement, uh, it began as a uh, anti-capitalism uh, movement, and then it ended up to be a very capitalist uh, player and, uh, and now we have new cooperativism and talk about, uh, new cooperatives, new cooperativism and SDGs in general. I just would say that, uh, cooperatives as social and uh, solidarity economy organization can be, uh, absolutely useful, uh, players at the micro level to implement the SDGs. But what uh, we have also to fight for is to stress uh, and underline the fact that at the macro level is necessary also a political coordination and is not going to be an excuse to say, well, we have thousand cooperatives at the micro level, so that's it, it's okay, we have done with SDGs. No, there are also macro level issues that have to be addressed by political forces such as governments. And so the SDGs are a system that have to interrelate the different levels. At the micro level, people can organize their forces and resources in cooperatives of social business or you no know, profit, whatever. But at the macro level, we have to ask for more political co coordination. So uh, I'm going to hopefully have both this concept in, in uh, two papers in autumn. Uh, if you want to be in touch with me, I will send the copy when they are out uh, on the journals. And again, thank you very much for having invited me here. It's been a really, really useful webinar for me. Thank you very much, Michaela. And so perhaps we'll draw the the um, this first seminar to a conclusion. I just want to thank um, uh, Sarah and Michaela for their contributions. I want to thank Rory for convening in the first instance and also for all of your participation and interest in um, having this conversation um, and listening to each other. So thank you very much for your for your contributions.